Should you play Fallout 76 in 2024? It's an interesting question people have been asking me ever since the show aired and I've been playing Fallout 76 in the aftermath. I'm not an intimately familiar fanatic of Fallout 76. I did play it a couple of years ago. Um, had some fun with it, but I was doing other things. Coming back to it now a couple of years later, I've seen some improvements they've made, some quality of life features. Uh, the game has an expansion coming down the pipeline. It's currently on their public test server. There's a lot to see and do here. There's a lot to love. Um, the game as it exists today in 2024 is a lot different than it was when it first launched. I'd kind of like to talk about that a little bit, but also just talk about where the game is today and why I think, yes, you should play Fallout 76 in 2024. There's no reason not to. So when you get going, it has your typical array of sort of survival co-op multiplayer options here. So you have uh, the general adventuring where you can join a server with other players up to other up to 24 other people and you could just go join and have fun. Um, then there's Fallout 76 which is uh, for a private adventure but this is locked behind the Fallout First uh, subscription but this allows you to have up to eight players who have shared progression with adventures kind of like what we're doing with Enshrouded. Then you have Quantum Worlds, which is a limited time seasonal thing, max 24 players. Uh, you don't share progression with your adventure, which is over here. Um, and there are certain account words, awards that you can't earn. And then there's Custom Worlds, which you can do um, with if you have a, a subscription with your friends. So things to think about. I play on this mode. This is the one I care about. We're going to jump in. We're going to show you a little bit about what the game looks like uh, as you run around. This is my character my uh, vault resident vault 76 um, everything you know and love about fallout is here from quirky dialogue to sort of over-the-top violence and all the things we've come to know and love from fallout the game itself plays exactly like all the other fallout games you've ever played hit B I'm on the Xbox but essentially you know hit B opens up your pip boy and from here you can go through and, and look at all your things um, so the controls are the exact same as what you've seen in all the other games and especially if you're coming over from Fallout 4 or Fallout 3 or 4 or New Vegas but mostly 3 and 4 because they're Obsidian games um, excuse me Bethesda games <laughs> I got sidetracked there uh, uh, Fallout New Vegas being the Obsidian game the other two being Bethesda games if you've played Bethesda games in the past Skyrim you know Elder Scrolls you'll be familiar with the way this controls whether you're on mouse and keyboard or a controller but, um, you know, the game as it exists today is a lot different than it was when it first launched. Um, I might need to turn my mic off in-game. Check this out. Oh, I know why. Because I'm logged in via the Xbox app. I would go in here into the menu. I go into settings to get that turned off while we're doing this video. Because there is open mic, uh think voice chat mode off there we go um if you want to use voice chat in game you totally can but i want to turn it off so people aren't hearing me ramble um so the uh the game when it launched was a little different than it is now uh, when, the, when the game launched it did not have npcs um it had notes and things that you could find to do environmental storytelling so they would tell you things about the world why are there a bunch of group leaders here this is interesting but these days as you can see there's npcs all over the place there's quests that you would normally get so as an example you can come into this uh this is the wayward which is sort of like the first tavern well, you're going to come into look who it is how about you come here friend We've got some things to discuss. Wow, Polly has a body now. This is cool. So this is a follow-up to a quest I did. Um, I had to help assemble Polly. Spoiler alert. Because um, originally we only found her head. So she's got things she'll talk to me about now. Um, we've got Duchess over here. We've got um, um, Snoochie Boochie over here with Mort. Um, and going through here you can talk to all of these npcs and if you've ever seen What's a bethesda poison? type of dialogue system it's the same thing here you're going to get these conversation wheels coming up and you can go up here um, and talk to her about various different things you can also show the history if you've had a history during this session um, and you can leave when you're done um, 
You've got all the things that you would typically expect from a Fallout game, like sneaking around, there's lock picking, there's a bear rug. Um, I don't think there's any locks to pick up here, uh, but I'm going to run up here just in case. Take, take a look at it. If you could take everything, all these things can be broken down into um, junk. So if I were to take, like, take all these things, take the phone. I'm going to take anything that's not nailed down because uh, we're going to take these over to my uh, camp here in a second. Here. So now that we've grabbed a bunch of junk, um, this is one of the things that carries over from the other games as well. Um, that I just want to show you because I think it's worth showcasing um, so that we can get out of the way um, the fact that all the things you know and love from all the other Fallout games you've ever played is here. You've got your... Um, Fallout Combat, you've got your Pip-Boy, you've got a modified version of the VAT system here, and then over here you have uh, the ability to scrap everything. So all those things I just picked up, this is where I think Fallout 76 does it better than any of the other Fallout games, because you can literally scrap all your junk, break it down into all these components, and use these components to craft things. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to we're going to stash over here all these things we're going to stash it all into my stash box then we're going to come over here and say well i i could craft weapons um there's also the armor workbench here uh, for those of you who want to do that and then if we had an outpost going we could uh ooh, hello overseer's cache i'm going to take all of those thank you very much free goodies and you can go in here and you can work on crafting weapons, you can craft armor at the other station, like over here. And then if you want to, you can also place your own camp, which we can do here. Oh, hang on. My camp is already set up. I forgot about that. So let's go into the map really quick. Where is my camp? There it is. Fast travel. So the outpost system of Fallout 4 is cool and everything else, but you can also do the same thing here because ooh, somebody's shooting around my camp. Here we go. So I've already set up some stuff here. I've got a cook station. I've got a water pump. I've got a weapons workbench, armor workbench. All the things I would need to keep a happy little uh, camp spot going here. And then if I come over here and click on this right here, we can go into the build mode and we can now look at all these different things that we can build. And there's tons of different things you can build. We have at the top, we can look at blueprints. Um, we've got things we can build from allies. We've got floors. We've got walls, different types of walls, different types of roofs, different types of stairs, doors, different things we can craft, different kinds of crafting stations that we'll be using, turrets and defenses, um, and all of these things, all of these things require different types of components. So there's lots and 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 lots of things you can see and do here. I would argue the outpost system is just as robust as it is in Fallout 4. The difference here being that other people can use your NPCs if you choose to allow them. People can enter your domain. They can't do anything to it, but they can enter if you're on the map and they can explore and see what you have. So. Let's talk about, in my opinion, what does Fallout 4 offer um, that would make you want to try it in 2024? A Fallout experience. Now, I know some people, because of the fact that this game launched without NPCs and there was some jank when it first launched because that's Bethesda, there was initially a lot of pushback on Fallout 76 related to some of the PvP stuff, which, you know, doesn't even factor into it these days. It's all consensual if you want it to be. Um, it's just, I've only ever played co-op, you know, so that's just the way I choose to play. Um, but I know there was some, you know, vocal, there was a vocal minority in the beginning that for a long time tainted the reputation of this game. Um, and it's the similar situation of where you've got a certain 
community of people who just really hate Bethesda. It's the same type of community who hates EA, who hates Blizzard. They just love to hate companies for hating companies. I'm not one of those people. I recognize that Bethesda launches games that have flaws. So does Ubisoft. So does Larian Studios. So does Bioware. So does every company under the sun. Um, the reality is that if you're a fan of Bethesda games, you'll probably like this game. Like you've play, If you've played Starfield and you liked the Fallout show, but you've never played a Fallout game, Fallout 76 is a great game. You're going to see, um, you're going to, you're going to know the same controls from Starfield, but you're going to be able to play a Fallout version of that. If you played Fallout 4, but you've never played Fallout 76, it's going to be the same control scheme and themes and everything else you've done in Fallout 4, but with modernized quality of life features that make Fallout 76, in my opinion, a little bit of a better game. It's a personal opinion only because I don't play with mods. So for me, the modding scene isn't really part of the equation. So I like 76 because it's a game as a service, and I'm okay with that because I like playing online MMOs and games as services. So you can choose to play this game completely solo if you want to. Oh, hello. Somebody's in my camp. Oh, by the way, there is a um, quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. A VAT system here that's a little different. So you're not choosing specific body parts to hit. It's just based on distance and stuff. Attacking me in my camp. And I did talk about this in another video. Like, the, the, the fact that, like... I'm going to take all these things because I'm at my camp and I can break them down. Like, ammo is way easier to find in this game than it is in Fallout 4 or any of the previous Fallout games. We can immediately go over here, by the way, to the weapons workbench and just scrap those things that I just found because I don't need them. So, by the way, if you have turrets and things built, they can't get at you. Um, uh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Get out of here. Why they're coming for me like that? Scrap items. I hit the wrong button there. Uh, we're gonna scrap that. There it is. I gotta get my pistol switched out. All right. Anyway, um, the game runs great. There's lots of things to do. It's a big map, and like any MMO um, that you've ever played in the modern age, you can play this as a single-player RPG if you want to. You can join up with other people if you want to. There are lots of single-player quests, a ton of content in terms of single-player storylines that you could do, and then there's all these optional like daily ops and world activities so you can expand that and see all the different things that are going on um, over here um, public events so on and so forth featured events um, you can also as you're running around you'll find you'll unlock things on the map that are like um, other quests and dailies and things of that nature there's also the challenges you'll notice at the top there's all this stuff going on so here's the dailies that you could uh, work on there's uh, weeklies that you can work on. There's the character things that you can work on, all of which earn you um, atoms that you can use to buy different things. There is a store if you want to use it. Um, it's mostly for like <clears throat> cosmetic stuff, so you can go in here and find things like skins for your uh, power armor. Um, there's utility stuff like um, repair kits and other stuff. So there's all sorts of things, and I got a freebie in here somewhere I got to go find. There it is. Nuka-Cola Twist. Limited time, two hours. We're going to unlock that for free. And I have a free skin somewhere in here. Paint job. Hell yeah. 
So there's lots of little ways that you can customize the game, which is if you're familiar with MMOs and how game as a, games as services work, all that stuff is here. Um, you don't have to use any of it if you don't want to, but it's here if you choose to. Um, and then, of course, you can go into like challenges and check out those things. Um, there's expedition missions. Um, there's just tons of stuff to do, and it's a really, 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 really big map. So if you like Fallout and you're looking for something to sink your teeth into, this is the most recent game. Um, that came out. It came out in 2018, so it's been out for a few years now. I feel like they're sort of just hitting their stride. They're having peak numbers right now because of the Fallout show, and people are having fun, and that's the most important part. So for me, that's what I always look at. Is the game fun? And I think that the game is fun. For me, I'm having a blast. You've got all the things you're familiar with. You've got the Brotherhood of Steel. You've got the Enclave. You've got all these storylines going on. You've got because of where this is set in the Appalachian Mountains, you've got local legends brought to life in the game from that environment. And we can run around and see this isn't your typical like wasteland um, game where it's just desert and nuclear wasteland. This is just the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and if we go back, we can like travel up to uh, Vault 76, um, which was up in here. If we wanted to go up here and check that out, that's where we started. Um, but there's just a ton of fallout stuff to do so if you want to play a fallout game this would be my recommendation as opposed to fallout 4 because that's a much older game um, and for people who may not enjoy the older games with sort of the clunky factor older graphics and so on and so forth this is going to be much more up to the modern standards for gamers who want to try something fallout and because of the cosmetics option i think that you know yeah you could do cosmetics in in um Fallout 4 as an example, but I just really prefer the way they're done here and the way you can make your character look. For me, it just, there's a lot more options here and I like more quality of life features. And for me, Fallout 76 works. That's my recommendation. You should totally try it. I've got it on Game Pass, so you can do it on PC or or console. The one caveat I would say is that if, you do, if you're gonna play it by, by yourself, pick where you want to play and just go from there but if you're going to be doing cross play with your friends it is worth noting that pc and xbox are separate so you don't get to do the shared gameplay between there's no cross play so it is unique to the device that you're playing on so that may be a consideration for people who want to play it with other people but since i play it single player it doesn't really impact me that way so food for thought if you want to know more, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update as I am playing through Fallout 76 as well as Fallout 4. Um, check out the playlists down below, and of course, don't forget to check out the daily streams between here and on Twitch. There's also a Discord to Patreon if you want to get a copy of my latest fantasy novel. The links are all down there. So I'll see you next time, everybody. Stay safe. Happy gaming.